Hello everyone, welcome back to the Football Shirt Show and welcome to a brand new Around the Ground. Today I'm here outside the Hive London, home to Barnet FC, where they'll be taking on Aldershot Town FC in about an hour's time or so. But before we watch the match, let's get inside, take a look around and find out some more about the club. Barnet FC was formed in 1888, but actually folded in 1902. However, local rivals Avenue FC and Barnet Alston FC merged together in 1912 and after the First World War changed names to Barnet FC and the club was reborn. For about 20 years or so, they enjoyed moderate success, only finishing outside the top half of the table just once in the 1920s. They played their football at Underhill Stadium, located in Chipping Barnet, which used to be standing here behind me, until it was knocked down in place for a school back in 2013. Barnet won consecutive Athenian League titles in 1931 and 32, and alongside this success, Star was born. Lester Finch, arguably the best ever amateur player to feature for the Bees, emerged in the early 1930s. He played for England once, against Wales, but the cap wasn't awarded because the game was held during wartime. Despite the impact of the Second World War, Barnet still brought home three major trophies, those being two league championships and an FA Amateur Cup, won by the club after beating Bishop Auckland 3-2 in the final of the competition at Stamford Bridge. They also featured in the BBC's first ever live televised game in October 1946 against Wildstone and also became one of the first ever English teams to play a team from Hong Kong when they faced Sing Tao FC after they won their league. The Bees continued to develop, eventually turning professional after joining the Southern League Division 1 in time for the 1965-66 season. Throughout the 70s and 80s, Barnet played at Wembley in the FA Trophy, saw Jimmy Greaves feature for the club and in 1973 played QPR in the FA Cup, drawing in the first game and then losing 3-0 in a replay. Barnet was one of the founding members of the Alliance Premier League, the first league outside of the Football League to cover the whole of England. The first season of the competition was in 1979-80 and it's still going today as the National League. Despite this though, Barnet were constantly in the relegation zone. Barry Fry was Barnet manager from 1978-85 but after leaving for one season he returned and led the team to promotion to the Football League in 1991 after a dramatic 4-2 victory at Fisher Athletic in the final game of the season. Barry was to leave Barnet in 1993 however and left the club floating between the National League and League 2 for many years. It was clear change was needed if Barnet wanted to be a consistent Football League side so in 2012 all backroom staff were released, a new board was appointed and many of the previous season's players were also released, including club captain Mark Hughes. The two biggest changes though were Firstly, after a long battle with Barnet Council over leases and access issues, Barnet played their final game at Underhill, winning 1-0 against Wickham Wanderers in front of a sellout crowd of 6,001 in 2013. The ground was sold, demolished and in place Arc Pioneer Academy was built and the club moved to The Hive. As a capacity of 6,500, which includes 5,500 seats. There are four main stands and the pitch looks absolutely exquisite, so well done to the ground staff. In terms of food, you can visit the Legends Bar, a cafe serving Starbucks, which looks out onto the pitch, or some brand new tea huts situated around the ground. Make sure to watch to the end of the video because we'll be trying some of their food. There's also a club shop. Let's get inside and take a look. In the end, I got this scarf for £12.90. It's really nice, uh, it's got a really nice texture to it, and it says Barnet Football Club, come on UVs. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but on a separate playing field, just by the Hive, I believe they do have a piece of seating from the old Underhill Stadium. Also, if Barnet were to climb the English Football Pyramid, there is lots of space to expand, because around the stadium are multiple AstroTurf pitches and a large car park. And secondly, Dutch international star Edgar Davids joined as a player manager, bringing worldwide media attention to Barnet. 
The spell at the club was alright, more fans were attracted to games and a cloud of optimism was permanently hung over the hive. However, after narrowly missing out on the conference playoffs, he was sacked in 2014. Nowadays, Barnet play in the National League and have recently been struggling in the relegation zone. However, after sacking former manager Harry Kewell about a month ago or so, interim manager Dean Brennan has done pretty well, winning five out of his last seven games. Joining me now is Dave Anderson, goalkeeping coach at Barnet FC. So you are the goalkeeping coach here at Barnet. Yes. What exactly does that involve? Well, obviously, I was taking the goalkeepers during the week. Um, it's changed a little bit in the last few weeks because of the change in, in Dean sort of coming to manage. So effectively, I've been helping him a little bit more than the goalkeepers. Mm. Kirk Raymond's come in, he's taken them, but today he's away, so I'll be doing the keepers today. But on a weekly basis, you know, you just work work with them for probably an hour each day, and then they, they go into the main group with the, the rest of the squad, you know. Yeah, and you mentioned Dean Brennan coming in. How mm. much has he changed by it over the past few weeks? What has he brought to the team? Well, I just think that it, he, he obviously is experienced at the level. Yeah. He's done well at the level. He um, he brings a, a the camp's happy. You know, it's you know, it's a lot. He can have fun at the right times, and yeah. and you're trying to build a togetherness, which I think he's he's certainly starting to do, and our results would suggest that. But you can't get too carried away in this game you know you just have to the old saying one game at a time the guy who invented it's a genius because it literally has to be that mm. now you used to be a player yourself of course as a goalkeeper how different is that to being a goalkeeper coach well it, yeah it's 120 years ago you know when i played but uh i, I think the game's changed massively um in in fitness and the science of it and well, balls and gloves if you're talking about goalkeeping you know they've changed massively over the years uh, the the style of goalkeeping's changed because the balls move a lot more so it's a technically it's a different it's a different task to, to, to when I played mm. but um, it, it, I think it's still a very very important position yeah. I think you you're the only person in your team that wears a different colored shirt for a reason and as much as outfield players think they can play in goal they can't, mm. <laughs> you know, it's a specialised position. And what is your sort of goalkeeping style or goalkeeping coaching style? Well, I think what you, you have to, it's, it's a more personable relationship because effectively you're working with three or four. You, you very rarely work with more than four goalkeepers. So it's more one-to-one -one stuff. Um, my personal style is we, we will go through the game the week before clip out the goalkeeper's clips what he's done and what speak to him about how he feels about about himself and then and then sort of work on anything he feels he needs or we feel he needs we'd speak about it um, and we all within a lot of stuff that's quite routine because you know it's like any other job there is a routine to it you know so that's the style I'm not I'm not a sort of uh, a dictator to goalkeepers I think I speak to him and and that's how the relationships yeah. formed really and you mentioned that the position has changed massively over recent years. Mm. Do you still think that some of the things you were taught when you were a goalkeeper, do you think that applies to how you coach your keepers? Yeah, I, I think the, the fundamentals are the same. You know, you, you, you have to be able to organise a back four. You have to understand the game. You, you have to have, be able to catch a ball. That's mm. always handy, you know. Um, you, when I say it's changed, I think that there's lots of stuff that's changed in football. You know the pitches are better. We get to watch every game because it's videoed. So all that stuff. We've got GPS systems, so we can tell how many miles players run and how fast run. So all of that's a progression of the science, as in everything, any sport you'd find will be the same. The fundamentals of goalkeeping are still the same. Keep it out of the net. Yeah. <laughs> it's the basic one, you know. And uh, now, of course, Barnet brought in highly rated Norwich City goalkeeper mm -hmm. uh, Aston Oxborough on loan for this season. How have you found working with him so far? I think he's very, very good. You know, I, I, I coached Nicky Pope, who's now at mm. Burnley and, and played for England in his younger career, and, and I put Ox right up there with him. Um, I, I think, without tempting fate, he, he's destined to play at the top level, yeah. um, albeit without injury or something. You know that that we wouldn't wish on any player, but if he if he has a clear path. I don't see any reason why he won't go all the way to the top. Watch him today, he's, he's, he's a very, 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 very good goalkeeper. Yeah, and you mentioned that injury he's had for how many years? Is it? Like no, he, he, I think he had a, an Achilles injury um, 
last year and, and sort of was due to go out on loan and, and sort of get injured the last sort of dead pre-season. It's taken the best part of a season, but that's to our benefit. Because I think if he goes out on loan last year, we don't see him again. He doesn't come back to this level. So that's our benefit and it's his benefit now that he's, he's in playing regular football because every footballer, especially goalkeepers, want to play and they have to play, you know. Uh, and for him, who's at a Premier League club, this is a great foundation for him. And you feel that it's quite difficult to help a goalkeeper who's just had a quite big injury uh, get back to playing regular first team football? Well, I think, I think we've, we're fortunate we've got sort of performance staff here who mm. deal with the injuries, the physio, the medical team here are excellent. Um, they deal with all of that. We only get the goalkeeper back when he's ready to come back. They do all this step by step, getting them ready to, to return to, to, to what we do with them. So that's their department and, and Barnet are very fortunate with the, with the people we have here. They're, they're, they're excellent. So sort of a big team? Yeah, well, it's, it's, not a, yeah, it's a bigger team. That's yeah, another thing. If you, if you talk about how football's changed, the, the, the staff team have, have, have got better, you know. And finally today, of course, you used to be a manager yourself, mm -hmm. most noticeably at AFC Wimbledon in the mid-2000s. If you think it is the case, how much more easier is it to just be a coach as opposed to manager? Oh, listen, the, the manager carries all the stress, you know, it's, that is, not because he's just stood out of camera now, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, he's turned up, he's turned up at the, yeah, yeah. so um, no, they, they carry all the stress, it's, a, you know, a, a, my saying to, to people is that as, as, as an assistant, I think you're, an, you're essential. Yeah but you're sitting two steps behind the manager and effectively it's 200 miles. Yeah. You know, it's, it, the, the difference between being an assistant and being a manager is, mm, I can't tell you how big. Um, and I had 2,000 games as a manager and I'm delighted not to be a manager anymore. But then um, hopefully Dean will, gets a little bit of that 2,000 games experience, you know, and with the rest of the staff, mm. you know, we make suggestions, but the manager makes a decision. And just quickly, sorry, hmm. uh, you say 2,000 games in charge. What was your favourite moment? <sighs> I suppose, you, I think, of a, a couple of big ones. I, I broke a British record when I was at Wimbledon, so that night was a big night. Uh, um, and winning at Wembley, which was my last game as a manager, it was every schoolboy's dream. Hmm. Even coming from where, where I come from, you know, we used to play, the game we played in, in Rathcoole and Belfast was, was called Wembley. So to finish your career there, I'm a fortunate guy. Well, thank you very much. And My you pleasure. Let's see that shirt again, you know. Yeah. Well, say, that's lovely shirt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Barnett did have another amazing chance in the 42nd minute and did put it home, but unfortunately it was offside. And that was all for the first half. At half time, Barnett won, all the shot nil. But after a 15 minute break that went really fast, the players were back out onto the pitch. For the first 15 minutes of the second half or so, Barnett were really piling on the pressure, forcing great saves like this one. However, Aldershot did pull through and in the 56th minute got a goal to equalise the scoreline. And from then on, Aldershot were on it, creating brilliant chances like this. Throughout the game, the Bees fans were really angry with the referee, but these next couple of moments just show how frustrated they were with him. Probably because of the support from the fans, Robert Hall scored one of the best goals I've seen live in the dying moments of the game to secure Barnett the win.
Well, there we go. That is the end of an absolutely amazing around the ground here at the Hive London, home of Barnet FC. Full time, they secured a 2-1 victory over Aldershot Town with that last minute winner. Uh, what an absolutely brilliant crowd. I mean, Barnet are known for having a really bad atmosphere. Uh, from my visit today, I can confirm that this is really, really not true. Uh, it was an absolutely amazing game as well. And this doesn't bump them up too far on the table. I think it only takes them something like 15th or 14th. It may not sound amazing, but considering where they've been in recent years uh, and, you know, looking at the squad they got now, the backroom staff they got now, I think they are going to reach new heights, hopefully by the end of the season, or at least in the next couple of them. Thank you so much to Dave Anderson, the goalkeeping coach, for agreeing to do the interview with me. And like I said, that's the end of the video. So thank you everyone so, so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share and comment and I'll see you next week. Bye.